so welcome back to our empress central uh, new learning sessions in the last session we have seen the very basics of uh, success factor or human capital human experience management platform academy in that we seen uh, if you have gone through those uh, materials I, I know it is very lengthy but yes. uh, if you can you see the material now which i, am I have I've, I've gone quite far except when i got a little down my health was not very strong, but I've gone far. I've done the I've done the admin basics. I've done the let's see. I've passed the administrators. I think I have just started the role role based permissions. Okay, great, yeah. great. So yeah. you have yeah. utilized but, the weekend and understood some pre read. Okay, so it is easy for me now to explain for you. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing was that. Uh, when it came to try to practice, that is when I, I texted you to see if I could go in. Obviously, the the system doesn't allow uh, login to provision provisioning. Yes, so you will not be having provisioning access at this moment because that yeah. is uh, exclusively for the certified consultants. Okay. No, no, I understand. What I, I thought it might be there in the in the system, which is a training system, but it's not there. Okay. Which was which? Any space particular exercises you tried and it were you are not able to do it? Is it? Uh, if you scroll up a bit, uh, I think yeah. you scroll up on this document. Uh, let me see. Which lesson? Lesson. Uh, let's see. Admin. Uh, can you click on navigation accessing tools? Number one. Instance access. You yeah, are that, that 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 one there. Oh. You see how you see how you have this. Uh, Box there for practicing. Yes. No. Yes. For the for the instance. Yes. And uh, instance provisioning and company settings. There yes. was this uh, not not this recording uh, icon here, mm -hmm. but it was the, the the practice icon, which is the computer screen. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. Uh, this one, uh, yeah. Uh, if you go down, go down a bit. Go down. Ah, uh, that mean I can go down a bit. Not this one. Where where we where there was a, a um, the icon on how to practice. Okay. We, we saw it. I got I you. I got uh, you. I check, got check, you. Check pro, check provisioning. Check provisioning. Chapter provisioning. Yeah, there, there. This one here. Uh -huh. I tried to practice here. Then if you scroll up, you see more of that. Okay. Okay. So you tried this one. Admin center, company setting, manage provisioning. Yes, I I tried I tried to go in there. Uh -huh. I see that manage provisioning access. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there is, it doesn't, the system doesn't allow it. Is it? Because I tried. So this is basically just to, um, you you will be giving, just you will be basically you to remove the provisioning access. So if you would like to okay. remove or something like that, then you can okay. do it. But if okay. you would like to create something, you have to go back to the backend. Okay. Yeah. So that is so a restriction. The restriction at this moment yeah the only thing i wanted to then i want to make sure i get the the, the order of uh, information correctly mm -hmm. is that you access the provisioning through admin center but is that correct or is the other way around it is a kind of a managing the provisioning access it, you can do from the admin center but actually okay. if you go to the provisioning it says uh, like you can see Provisioning is the key configuration tool by SAP, and customers never use provisioning, nor yes. do have access to it. Okay, suppose yes. you are working yes. from a customer end. Okay, as you are working as a customer end, uh, yeah. customer admin, then you will not be able to access it. Okay, so 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 if you are if you are if you are a consultant, yeah, would the Arab BP then be the one to give you access to provisioning? Consultants again, there are two types of consultant. If you are an internal okay. consultant within the company, within the client, basically, then yeah. still you will not be having access, even if you are a okay. certified okay. one. Okay. 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 So for yeah. that reason, they clearly mentions like uh, implementer, mentors, consultant, yeah. and support representatives. And yeah. when I say consultant, these are the external consultant or the partner consultant. I am saying here. Okay. Yeah. What my point? Yeah. And yeah. similarly, support rep representative. They will be using this uh, provisioning and uh, they will be having access to it. Okay, customers okay. will not be having access to the provisioning. That is a strict policy from okay. SAP and they will Success be follow that forever. 
okay so okay. this is a kind of a screen which you will be i have shown to you last time okay yes so this exactly, one you can this one you cannot access it's only the certified uh, consultant that can access this screen exactly exactly so only okay. the certified okay. consultants will be having access to it and uh, yeah. if you are not having those people uh, after the post implementation basically yeah. if you anything is changes required you can raise a ticket yeah. to sap and sap support team uh, they will be helping helping you to whatever so, so 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 that means then that after implementation there still be um um a kind of an arrangement whereby uh, info, uh um, processes that need to be modified or change requests that mm -hmm. comes from maybe day to day support um mm -hmm. uh, incidences we still have to go back to sap yes Okay. You have to go back to SAP for this. If you are not having a implementation partner or the support partner who will be helping yeah. you, in those cases yeah. you have to raise it to SAP, and SAP will be helping you in this regard. Okay, that is okay. the point. Okay. Yeah. And now it is clear, right? Like, uh, why you are not able to access that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this so is. Did, uh, yeah. I I did. I went as far as. Uh, new control position this one we have already seen which also you can't do it from the instance it is from again uh, yeah. how to add a new admin account granting permissions to view okay this one in, in details will be today seeing it get the permission okay. view and all mm. okay so all these things will be saying and navigating accessing tools and supports this one i have explained to you last time like how we'll be navigating to those support uh, tickets or support kbs knowledge based article from the home page itself Okay. Okay. You can go through that. Okay. So this. Uh, can I access this? Can I access this tool from from my admin center? Yes. Yes. So I will just explain you that. I think I have explained. Okay. But still, uh, let okay. me. Uh, like you can go to the next gen admin. Okay. So from that, uh, again, if you go to the next gen admin, so this is already I have explained. Upgrade center. There is something called upgrade center where exactly you can upgrade and if anything is uh, coming up. So let me show you in the system directly. Yeah. Can you see the system now? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll go back to the admin center. So this is my one admin, and I, last time I have already explained the difference between one admin and next gen admin. Next gen admin yeah, will yeah. be looking like the UI will be looking looking like more analytical UI, but uh, and yeah. one admin, whatever we are seeing now, it is actually a module wise. You can go company process and cycle wise. Okay, so that is a. Uh, Good. Uh, that's the difference. Main uh, reference. Okay. Other than that, the right hand side, you can see there is something called upgrade center. Okay. Yes. So what is this? So any kind of a new updates which is coming from SAP, success factor for your uh, happily release. Okay. So you can. Uh, there are certain things which are uh, opt-in. Opt-in means basically optional. So optional upgrades. Okay. Like you can see, there are many. Uh, Forty-five. You can also see the count here. So there are 45 optional upgrade, and also we have module wise also you can upgrade. Like suppose I would like to have upgrade which is coming from a platform point of view. Okay, let me go to the platform. Then you can see from a platform point of view, all important upgrades all are implemented. Recommended up upgrade also implemented, but from an optional point of view there are nine, okay, which is uh, okay. not yet updated. So, if you like to have, uh, let's say, new experience for the home page, okay, I would like to go for it. It is very simple. Only thing yeah. is, uh, you have to see it, okay. So, whenever this is a new thing, okay, so like new experience on the home page, and SAP mm -hmm. is saying these are the, whenever you are upgrading, what are the new things you'll be getting here? Okay, so mm -hmm. these are the new things. Uh, SAP will be clearly mention that, and also. You can see how much time it will take. Okay. Okay. So it yeah. says uh, this change affects all users. Who are the people who are going to be affected for this? How much time it will take? But it yeah. will. It says it will take up to two minutes. Within two minutes. And is there any prerequisite? Yes. You must have a RBP. Okay. So role based role based permission you must be having. Then only yeah. you will be able to upgrade. So simply now yeah. I will have what I will do. I will click upgrade now. Okay. Okay. And before upgrading this, if you would like to share this feature to any of the admin, okay, let's say I would like to say <coughs> share someone in the company itself, I can share also. Okay, let me put it like this way. Uh, let me put someone's name. So 
so i can directly put that person's id and mm -hmm. automatically this message is there so that yeah. uh, uh, you do not have to mail from directly it will go to that particular person's uh, thing and he can yeah. he or she can uh, this mess he can see this message whether he likes or not okay yeah then if you are getting yes he both of you have uh, discussed and you are happy to go by about it so i can simply show you now how it will be upgraded upgrade within now. minutes okay okay so yeah. i'll click upgrade so, so, yeah so is this is this is this the alternative to applying the ss notes uh eg not exactly so basically uh, these are the features we do have but it is more easy compared to the applying notes okay applying notes whenever in sap we had a concept of code changes and lot of patches and all ah it is you can think of very similar but not exactly the same you can think or compare it with your uh, app upgrade okay so suppose you are using android or any of the particular apps or you are using mm -hmm. in ios suppose yes. there is a new yeah. version is coming up okay so okay. system already suppose says it says to you you get getting a notifications we are having okay. a higher version would you like to upgrade okay so those kind of messages so generally I'm, we should get yeah so maybe maybe i should ask the question differently yeah is, yeah please is this is this the same style that is is this the same method that is being used when you are applying the uh, payroll end of year uh, uh, support packs uh from a payroll point of view if it is a statutory requirement okay and uh, automatically it upgrades Okay. okay you do not have to apply any notes as i was mentioning last time we have two types yeah. of upgrade one is a universal okay. in the what is new viewer i have shown to you right one is universal mm -hmm. upgrade another one is a opt in admin opt in upgrade whatever currently i am doing it is an admin opt in means it is an optional thing okay whether you would like to want it or do not want it depending upon your choice okay mm -hmm. but if it is a universal upgrade some statutory changes or some platform level changes then those changes are automatically uh, upgraded by the sap product team you do not have to do go do it manually oh okay but my point because it's a cloud yeah. thing right for that reason uh, sap uh, prioritize those things in the development for that reason we do not have generally have general development access automatically they apply those upgrades in all the systems and depending upon the countdown so at present the next release in the month of may okay may yeah. june we will be having the next upgrade and one month before they will be giving uh, they will be upgrading those things in the preview instance or the stage preview whatever instance the test instance and they will be asking the customers to test whatever sp has uh, given and uh, they will be taking the feedback of those customers okay, okay. so if there is any bug or if any anything is issue is there sp tries to fix that within that particular window one month window then after everything is done in the finally uh, they will be upgrading uh, those things in the production environment that is yeah, the standard we follow for any modules of success factor yeah well you know let's say in Canada, in the us where irs will probably send uh, this huge uh, bucket of uh, update upgrade um, support packs mm. and in uh, let's say my organization let's say um, uh, mcdonalds mm. uh, in in a, in it in, in tax in the support tax for taxes mm -hmm. different states have their different things that IRS has sent mm -hmm. if if you if you push that at the platform level mm -hmm. won't the each of the companies have to go in there and take what belongs to them okay so from a payroll if it is a purely payroll point of view okay yeah, yeah i will yeah. just also tell you the example after this so generally okay. the payroll okay. point of view the couple of whatever we are doing in the on premise those yes. remains as it is okay okay so okay. you okay. have to okay. still apply those patches as usual yeah. in a traditional classic way and going okay. through those up to through the sap base system they will be upgrading those patches that remains okay. constant okay so if there is okay. something like the year end tax changes or due to some covid 19 there are some changes in the notes still you can because those things directly doesn't come to the success factor Okay. Yes. Uh, so from okay. a payroll point of view, certain things are there, which are yeah. actually uh, depending upon the on-premise uh, settings configurations. Okay, that remains same. Okay, nothing much. If at a cloud okay. level, at a platform level, something is change is coming up. Okay, generally those are uh, directly applied in the by SAP. You do not have to uh, apply individually. 
Hmm, but okay. there are certain things which are admin feature, admin opt-in feature. So you have a choice. You have to experiment. You have to, if you're happy, you would like to check it. Um, is there any impact on your current system? Generally, people go for it because uh, SAP keeps on, over a period of time, they will be asking you to make it mandatory over a period of time sometimes, okay? So that is the reason uh, whatever is uh, SAP has released, you generally take some time, in that one month of window, experiment or test uh, and check with your end user, admin user, whether they are happy, is there any increase? Because SAP always tries, success factor always tries to increase the productivity of the HR employees admin. So they try to do a lot of things, new, bring the new experience for those people. Hmm. So it is good to have. So all the things, uh, this admin opt-in things. Hmm. Yeah. I will explain you from a payroll point of view also, is there any upgrade? I will tell you. Yeah, yeah. okay. From the HCM point of view, hmm. uh, functional, functional consultant, Hmm. When this uh, um, platform has pushed all the up upgrades, hmm. uh, what what is a functional consultant supposed to do? Is just to test? Yes. So you are right. So basically, the far before testing, there are certain activities. Also, you I will explain you. So the last okay. time which I remember, like I have shown you the what is new viewer, right? That yes. uh, that website you need to go. What are the new changes has come up? You have yes. to take a download of that. If you are working for Employee Central or Employee Central Payroll, whatever module you are working for, that mm -hmm. entire seat you have to download. And after that, you have to identify which are the universal feature, which are admin opt-in. Okay. So okay. after understanding that, whatever the universal features, you just first uh, test it because this is directly affects your uh, system. Mm -hmm. And uh, just prepare the case uh, test scenarios. Uh, testing is one thing. Another thing like you have to explain. Okay, that's a consulting skill. So basically, uh, what are the changes have been come up? So you have mm -hmm. to first, you have to test it of your own and you make your observations. Then you mm -hmm. should conduct a session for the end user. Okay, so for mm -hmm. whatever whoever the end user or the admin user, okay. Generally, uh, people go for take one hour. It doesn't take more than one hour, one hour, two hour, two hour maximum to explain all those. Okay. Uh, it de depending upon the modules okay some of the modules yeah. have a uh, very less changes hmm. and some of the modules like ec you will be having more changes okay so yeah. just uh, prepare a presentation and even sap also provides those presentation out of box to so just okay. uh, take take care of those presentation and just try before you conduct that session with the customer just take one week of time uh, maximum mm -hmm. so you in that one week you will be able to test all the features whatever the new releases have been come up then you okay. conduct a session so yeah. universal upgrade, you do not have a choice. So you have to explain, it is the new changes have come up and you have to test it. And also after that, you have to ask your customer to test it. Okay, what they, okay. Did, what they liked it, what they didn't like, okay. So then yeah. accordingly, you can provide that feedback, take those feedback from the customer, you can provide to the SAP also, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing which I would like to say, um, time to time, SAP also conduct webinars, I mean, there are different types of webinar, okay, time to time to in that particular okay. one month, okay to participate oh. in those uh, your webinar along with your customer okay okay so if you have any question you can directly ask those questions to the live uh, in lives in uh, sessions to the product managers or the people who are working in that particular product okay so those are the general i do i attend those kind of sessions whenever uh, okay. there is uh, such kind of changes in a specific module yeah. okay okay so those are the couple of things like uh, consulting testing and training mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, participating in the community events, okay, like uh, okay. SAP live events in those uh, particular months. These three, four things you have to take care. Otherwise, okay. it's not very difficult, okay, not, yeah. uh, compared to our on okay. Any other questions? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. So now, I, in, in front of you, I'll just updating one uh, uh, feature. So I'll click yeah. yes. Okay, so you can see. Like it says, okay. congratulations, your system has been updated. It's a uh, take less than two minutes, okay? Wow. Immediately. Wow. Now, whatever you are seeing here, it says to take uh, the effect, you have to log out and log back again, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is mm -hmm. as usual practice. So we yeah. have to log off and log in again. Let me try to do that. Okay, so um, while you are doing that, hmm? while, you are, while you are doing that, while you are trying to log back in, um, when you when you when you do when you do the test, mm -hmm. do you um, let me try and phrase the question properly? Maybe 
-hmm. when you do the test and it says it's okay, it's okay, it's been done. Mm -hmm. Is there do, do the technical people direct that to the preview instance mm -hmm. rather than the production instance? That we do in the preview instance. Okay, so the in preview pre instance pre is your playground. Instance. Okay. Ah. okay. Whatever testing you will be doing, okay, so that yes. will be done in your preview instance only. Okay. okay. And SAP okay. will be releasing that for you one month before. Suppose, let's say, my planned uh, release date for uh, uh, production is, uh, say, June 1st. Then SAP will be yeah. releasing that one month before in the preview. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Say in the month of first week of May, they will be providing to you, let's say, okay, one month before, so that you'll be yeah. having enough time to test, uh, train, and consult with your uh, your uh, your clients okay so those are the things yeah. you can do before release okay so that is okay 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 you got right, my point you. okay sure and also there is an option if you see there are in the upgrade center you will be having a mm few -hmm. uh, recently completed upgrades so what are the recently completed oh. you can also see a okay. history of that okay history yeah. of what of the upgrade you have done completed okay so you can yeah. see like uh, these are the configuration oh, wow. which i have upgraded and one which date and what are the things you have done? Suppose I yes. would like to undo also, there is a 30 days of uh, uh, time period. Suppose I didn't like that upgrade uh, um, feature, I can also undo, mm -hmm. but with the, within okay. a time limit of 30 days. Within 30 days, yes. you have to you take a decision. Okay, okay so these okay. are the things which we can do. Okay, sure. so let me log off again and log in so that you'll be able yes. to see that uh, changes. It is much easier compared to just like your app, uh, mobile application or brain yeah. is very easy. You do not have to Absolutely. depend upon your SAP basis or any other persons anyhow. Yeah. It's almost like uh, what uh, you do with uh, iOS each time they do an upgrade. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So now yeah, I have uh, upgraded my system. I just, can I just take a call quickly? Sorry. Yes, yes, sure, 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 no problem. Okay. No problem. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so let me now uh, explain you something related to this. Uh, as you're asking specific to payroll, okay, so mm -hmm. specific to payroll also you can get by selecting the module, employee central payroll, suppose I'm choosing here, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, there are very few objects, like two objects are there. One is a yes. pick list and is a yes. creation of a termination notice object, and it is not country specific. Okay. Oh, so, it's generic. Uh, it is generic one generally they give it if anything coming from your uh, country specific uh, related to the payroll that will be always inside your on premise okay so, oh. so those things will still go on because the employee central payroll even if you're implementing uh, those are not in independent of your on premise because on premise the engine is still continuing okay and uh, those patch upgrades those concepts still exist at this moment also okay, okay. so whatever okay. you are seeing here this is very generic uh, upgrades generally come up for, from the payroll point of view okay, okay. so like uh, yeah. this is a very generic one it says like uh, uh, this is not, sometimes it is actually just an announcement but we have we do not have any upgrade for functionality but uh, some kind of pre release they have given an uh, official you can see they are saying it is just an announcement for an upcoming uh, upgrade but you do not have to perform any operations. So maybe in the next release, whenever SAP will be completing this functionality, then we will be getting, getting a button here, upgrade now. Yeah. Okay. So just an announcement here at this moment. This is regarding your, how you'll be upgrading from the upgrade center. Okay. Any questions? So, so, so yeah, so if, um, will you get a notification maybe in an email or somewhere that there is something waiting for you to upgrade? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, so regarding uh, so basically you have to monitor the, as I was saying, right? It's a community okay. page. Okay, so you have to whenever okay. upgrade is coming up, so you will be always yeah. uh, stick to this particular page, and there will be a countdown always running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you go to this, you can see. Uh, I'll just quickly refresh. Yeah. So you can see thirty nine days of countdown. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So okay. here, yeah. if you go here in this page, okay. So if you go inside it, then there will be another uh, detailed uh, things. Okay, so like what is going on in the, this is a, this is not a customer, this is not a consultant facing, it's actually generic community and it is primarily for customers. Okay, so you can see uh, there are two events. Oh, is it, this is a generic, com 
This is a generic community. Generic uh, community, mostly for the this customers. Is, this is generic community. Uh, this is a uh, mostly customer facing community. Oh. You can see community. Uh, hmm. If you're having S user ID, you can, uh, you will be able to. Oh, S U S S uh, S U or S uh, the generic S I I D or the one that has yes, to do yes. with the. Yes, If you are S having S I D, uh, using yeah. uh, then you can uh, log into that uh, this community using your S user ID. Okay, because uh, the one I have with um, IBM, they, they they canceled it because I have left IBM. Oh, okay, okay. But I uh, I think there's a generic one which is as long as you have a. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Can, so I, can, I, can you send me this link? Let me see if I can create an account. Ha, ha, ha. So yeah, I'll be sending this link uh, to you. Okay. 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 So basically, what happens? Uh, you'll be getting a release upgrade uh, countdown also here. One you can see yeah. one is event, one is a preview, another one yeah. is the production. Production means okay. after uh, mostly 40, 34, 35, 30 days like that only. The gap between this is one month mostly. Okay. Yeah. So. This is our preview release and this is our production release. And how will we okay. preparing and planning? Everything has been explained here. Okay. okay. Whatever I was yeah. saying. Okay. So what are the how you can engage with the business leader? How you can implement those? Uh, so everything is well documented and they provide this bulletin. It's a kind of a special bulletin. Okay. You okay. can join yeah. this thing and you'll be getting once you get you into a company. So you'll be having access to all of these things. So S okay. user ID and everything will be very well detailed. So you do not have to just simply read it and uh, you'll be able to do it. It's not very difficult okay. mm, sure. to understand. Okay. Thank you. This was the understanding where exactly all the information and there will be notification also. You'll be getting a, suppose you have subscribed to the newsletter. Okay. So mm -hmm. the, you'll be getting notification every month or every, whatever the new okay. thing is coming up. Generally say during your release, uh, they will be updating that these are the, in this new release. These are the different things. Okay, so those details you'll be finding in this community. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. So this was regarding your uh, upgrade and whatever the things we've discussed. Now I will be going back to the this note. Uh, upgrade center. It is clear. I have explained everything about it. This looks little yeah. different because it's an old screen SAP has given, but it's uh, more or less similar only. Okay. Yep. Upgrade center we discussed, then uh, search in product support. Okay, so this is, you're able to find it out. How, actually I also explained last time. Did you figure mm -hmm. it out? Uh, no, okay. I, I haven't got into this point, yeah. Okay, search in product, search in product support. Okay, so you have to read it like this. Oh, oh yeah, I got, uh, I got uh, to this point, yes, I got there. Okay, you got it right. I did, so, I did this, yes. Okay, so basically yes. from the product itself, you will be able to, navigate to the specific support you can see there is a right hand side there is a support button right hand side mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. from here you can directly get any kind of support here okay intelligently yes. it will pick whatever pages you are in accordingly yes. because currently i'm in upgrade center so you can yes. see there are note which is uh, upgrade center which is very related to that only okay so whatever okay. page you are in you will be getting those specific notes automatically okay Okay. Yeah, no, I got this. I got to this point. I just wanted to know. Mm. Uh, you see where they have a specific ID. All of them have IDs. Mm. And uh, sometimes when when I went, I think I went to one or two. Mm -hmm. The items there didn't quite make sense to me, so I wasn't quite sure what to do with them. Mm -hmm. I clicked on one or two of them. I can't remember which um, module I was, mm -hmm. but uh, I think I. Um, oh yeah, but I went. Through, I went through it. I went to this point. Okay, okay. So you this yeah, yeah. concept you will understood, right? Because you may Absolutely. not have uh, access because you are not having a user right, right? Because I am yeah. logged in into using my S user ID. So for that reason, it yeah. is giving yeah. all this access. Once you're okay. having your valid S user ID, then you will be able to also navigate to individual URLs from here. Okay. okay? Yeah. So from here, yeah. you can create a new incident, create a go to knowledge base, yeah. guided answer, you can go through everything you can uh, do from okay. this is called in uh, product support okay so yes. you do not have to leave the page of success factor inside the page itself or directly suppose you are getting an error here okay automatically if you go to that particular support trace uh, you will be getting a probable reasons which is uh, related to that particular error with some notes okay. provided by sap okay so okay. in that way it is very productive okay okay yeah 
So this is regarding your in product support. And uh, this is already you have must have done it. This is generic one, yes. how to search a particular tool. Mm. Yes. So yes. this is the I've thing. Okay. So uh, other than that, the lesson for uh, the admin basics, these are again a very small thing, like how to reset password and how to use those uh, things. Reset lock, somebody has uh, locked his user okay, after uh, multiple attempts. Okay. So you should be able to, these are all admin, regular admin activities. Okay. Okay. Not very difficult. Okay. And uh, and these are a the couple of terms, uh, so you must have gone through it. Like uh, what is a yeah. instance, what is job code? It's very generic one. Just to one time you read yeah. it. Okay, portlet yeah. is important one. Like portlet. Okay, so what is a okay. portlet? Hmm. So it's a uh, like they used to describe a chart or image that a particular source user data. So another thing which you have to remember, it is a very new thing. This was not mm -hmm. there when I started my. Career in 2016 17. This was not there. IAS, okay. SAP Cloud mm -hmm. Identity Authentication Services. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a new functionality. No, means uh, not very new, but uh, uh, one or two years back, one and a half years back, actually, they have come up with uh, this solution. Okay. So, from an identity access management, so you one day you were asking, right? Once, uh, once, like you are uh, looking for something, identity access management document. Yes. Like yes. Yes. It is very similar to that. It works in that direction. Suppose you are having a cloud uh, at a platform level and you are having some identifications, identification. So, it will connect to the other SAP solutions also. Okay. So, benefit of using it, IAS, it is a security functionality. Okay. So, you'll be having a better logon experience okay so like uh, here it says ias provides a better logon experience with success factor and uh, it also use clears cookies oh. from a security point of view, it is better and if you're going for people analytics and any other modules these days uh, sap is recommending to go for this ias uh, implementation as well and for this you may need uh, support from sap as well as uh, some technical consultant but this is one of the things which was not there earlier. Okay, so, so so I'm just trying to understand it. Is the identification from the point of view of what? Sorry. Huh. From a uh, on-premise, so as an SAP cloud from cloud platform application point of view, it is not okay. only for success factor. Along with success factor, suppose you are using some other SAP products, cloud products. Oh, okay. 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 So in those yeah. cases, so to have a seamless logon experience. Okay. Oh, because, okay. Uh, yeah. okay, because you do not have to log off success factor and log in again to another module, all identities. So if you're logging into a, one particular product, then systems mm -hmm. are able to recognize you that you are the authentic user and yes. uh, there should not be any problems inside uh, what are the permissions you do have. Accordingly, you should be able to access all those uh, modules yeah. outside success factor also. Okay. Come yeah, see. I was saying, I, I saw the SSO. Hmm. I thought it was a single sign-on. Single sign-on, yes. I saw social sign-on, so I don't know. Is there a difference? No, no, single sign-on is the concept the same. Like, uh, oh, okay. you do not have to, hmm, so like, um, you have to uh, access, you do not, it is uh, multiple things you have, uh, things you are having, but uh, if you're using single sign-on is on, okay? So you do not have to log in multiple times. Single yes. within single time, you have to. Okay, some of the customers they use like uh, there is a specific URL in company URL. If they go, it doesn't ask to log in their user ID or password. Automatically, yes. they will uh, having access to the home page of Success Factor. Okay. Yes. So, so there is the concept. Nothing uh, very new. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I just that I saw social social sign on, and which is which is also okay. Social same. sign on, social sign in. Where you have seen that? Uh, the previous page. Mm, previous page. Is it? Yeah, if you go to, uh, let me see. Yeah, if you go to, uh, no, the one where we came to the, that place where we were looking at the, at the identification. Uh, yeah, this place here. Yeah, you see the, you see down the there okay, there. Wait, where this you, one, yeah, this yeah, one. I, I saw, I saw. Yeah. So this is. Yeah, one, so, no, no, no. This is a different one. Okay. So IAS okay. can be set up. Require different login methods such as password, two-way vector authentication, social. Social sign-on means suppose if you have seen couple of websites, they allow whenever you are signing up the pages, okay, so they allow you to log in using your social media account. 
like your linkedin oh, 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 oh. facebook really? google okay, okay. Yeah, yeah 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 automatically okay, yeah. if you are using that particular say suppose i am going to sign up using my google account automatically okay. it will check take out my credentials from your user id password from the google account and it sure. will sign on and it will just allow yeah. it will ask you confirm that uh, this website users will be using your credentials from this whether you are approving or not it will just say yes then automatically those credentials will be um, authenticated and uh, you will be able to sign up that particular page and you will be getting a welcome email from that uh, new website so, okay. so this is a very same thing but it is uh, yeah. nothing to do with our this single sign on is different so you have asked a nice question this social sign on is different one so like okay. uh, clear is it clear yes clear okay so now now with that understanding we will be moving to the rbp part rbp yeah. is a very important one whenever in a bigger organization even i have seen uh, desig people are designated for only for do to this activity dedicated resource for rbp only role based they will be day in, day in and day out uh, they will be looking after the permissions okay mm. so it is a kind of uh, generally even uh, SAP basis person also sometimes uh, they do this activity, but as a functional consultant also you can do this particular activity. Okay. okay. So having said that, when it comes to uh, before that, I will just explain you some things here. So in the admin point of view, generally mm -hmm. we have a super administrator who will be uh, who is created uh, in the provisioning part. Then you will be having other administrator like a security mm -hmm. administrator or any other. Normal administrator you will be having depending upon the organizational setup, and super mm -hmm. administrator, as the name suggests, he will be having a more access, more uh, almost all access, similar to a consultant. Okay. Okay. Uh, except the provisioning. Okay. So other than that, security consultant, security administrator, and administrator, depending upon your uh, organization, you can set mm -hmm. up those uh, administrator. Okay. So measure these are the couple of uh, if somebody is asking what types of uh, administrator you can create. Oh, so this is just a suggestion. Super administrator is a must, and uh, you will be having security and other administrator also depending upon your requirement. Mm -hmm. Another thing they will people will generally ask how um, how many super administrator is required. Generally, mm -hmm. two people you can allocate. Okay. Maybe okay. If somebody's absence, you can uh, another admin can help. Okay, <clears throat> so from that point of view, two super administrator is uh, recommended. Okay, but there is okay. no hard and fast rule. You can have more also, but depending upon the complexity of your and. Uh, organization complexity of that organization okay. so sure. this is regarding the administrator and the rbp part so whenever we are having a rbp okay so i will explain you using your so uh, <clears throat> system directly i will show you that let me mm -hmm. check if anything is clear ha huh. so this is the diagram which basically you have to remember so whenever you are creating uh, a role generally it is role driven okay suppose i am an hr admin suppose andrews you are as an hr administrator and you will not be ac given access as per your user id okay only it is given to you will be assigned to a role and that role will be having certain permissions are you getting my point okay okay so generally suppose you are an hr administrator then uh, yeah. you will not be your user id suppose sets let's say sf001 so then the permissions yeah. will not be assigned directly to the user id rather mm -hmm. a role will be created the let's okay. say the role is hr administrator and as a, in a hr administrator what are the things you can do and that role will be having certain permissions okay and that role will be assigned to your user id okay, okay. So it is a kind of indirect way of assigning the permissions okay so here you can see you are having a role in the major in the middle section you can see in the green box suppose you are having a role of hr administrator okay and granted users means who are the people who will be having that particular role hmm. mm -hmm. and target users in the sense so basically you can restrict that target targets let's say you will be looking after only the hr data of uh, let's current only okay all the people who are uh, working in the current office another set of users uh, who will be having access to the minnesota Okay, that particular those will be the target users. Okay, accordingly you will be granted access to the those things. Suppose you are a super administrator, then the target users is everyone in the organization. Mm -hmm. So you got my point. The difference between target users and we will be seeing that in the system. Okay. And the target, target user, user 
the target users initially i thought the target users means that the granted users don't all have to get give uh, get the target but they they could sorry let me say that again the mm -hmm. granted users my understanding was that the granted users mm -hmm. are the people who can be assigned mm -hmm. this role mm -hmm. yes yes it but can be it can be Andrews, yes. it can be me, it can be XYZ, yes. anyone. Yes. yes. But then the target users means the ones that actually are giving the role, giving the giving that role to mm -hmm. among out of the granted users. Is that correct? Uh no. So okay. once I explain sure. it to the system, you will be able to understand it. Okay. Okay. So let okay. me go to the system and I will show you. Okay. And yes. before we create a permission, generally we create a group first. So first of all, we create a role-based uh, permission group, uh, and in the, after that, we create a permission role. Then we mm -hmm. assign that role to the group. Okay. So this is a standard okay. process. Okay. So first of all, suppose let's say I'm creating a group for HR, another group I'm creating for uh, all the finance people. Okay. So I just create those groups, then assign the permission role, then assign that role to a particular user or a particular group. This is the standard okay. process we follow whenever you are creating an RBP. Okay. Okay. So let's me now then. Uh, so these are all there. I will be anyway. I'll explain you the system itself, and you'll be able to understand it. Let me go to the system. Let me go to the admin center. So in the tool search, I will start typing manage permission group. You can see as soon as I type the manage permission, so we will be having two yes. things, manage permission group and manage permission roles. So these are the two yes. things, major things you should be having able to access in your manage permission in your RBP. Okay. So whenever you are having a role based permission, these two permission you must be having. And before okay. that, I will uh, previously you must not have seen this uh, access because today only I just uh, corrected a couple of configurations. Okay. And for that reason, you can see these two permission already it was not there. So how I did that. So this is there is something of set user permission. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. So here also you can have some kind of permissions here. And if I go here, you can see there is something called manage RBP access. Okay. Yes. Yes. So before that, let me make it favorite because we will be frequently using this. Manage permission roles, manage permission group. I made it favorite. And manage role based permission access. If I go there, it is a very small configuration, so, which was missing earlier. So, for that reason, yeah. you may have faced problem while logging, okay. uh, having access to this particular thing. So, you can okay. see in this screen. Uh, we have a username, your first name and last name, and there are certain permissions. One is allow access to this page, role-based permission admin. Okay, suppose let me go to your user ID, the ID which I am currently using. Okay, so user ID currently we are using is uh, SF001. Uh, yes. yes, so you can see this is the SF001, and what happened? This tick was not there earlier. Okay. This, oh, okay. if you are not having this tick right, then you will not yeah. be having to access to this uh, manage permission role, manage permission group, and all those things. Okay, so oh. for that reason, it was not there. So now, today, actually, I activated all the permissions in this column, okay, which says yeah. uh, role based permission admin. That means you are an RBP admin. People may be, okay. they, even as I was saying, people only there are in the bigger organization, they have dedicated role employ inside employee central platform only to look look after the rbp okay so those people are will be having access to this okay mm -hmm. so having said that i will now go back to our uh, menace permission group so if i go to the menace permission group here there are some existing examples are there i will explain that maybe mm -hmm. after the session you can uh, create a new group and you can try all those things okay yeah. So you can see there are uh, many administrative, many, many groups are already there. Okay, so there are uh, 
uh, if i just put a number 150 here i can see many groups so you can see there is a group for super administrator also okay yeah. and yeah. Uh, if i go inside before that you can see there is something called membership active membership means there are 23 users so when i say 23 there are 23 people who are acting as a super administrator in this uh, dummy environment okay so that you okay. can see okay suppose if i am going to a particular super administrator let's see you can see there are two types one is uh, things two tiles uh, two uh, header or two tabs you can see definition and the granted permission role Okay. So, granted permission role, which I'll be explain later on. I have to. Uh, we first of all we create a group, then we create a this kind of a role. Okay. So this role group will be having what kind of roles? It can be like he can he or she can HR manager. He can be a HR admin for contingent workforce. He can be onboarding admin also. Okay. So if I see if I scroll a bit here, or hover it around, you can see those uh, detailed permissions. Assigned to that particular role. Okay, so if I see it for, can you see the pop-up as well? Uh, it's not here yet. It's, it's blank. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it is loading actually. Okay. Okay. You can see now. Yes. Okay. So you also there is an option to take a print of it. Like you can, if you are like to for, take a, a download of it, you can take a PDF of it. So if this is a particular role, okay, which also very similar we can create. And what we have done for a particular this administrator, oh, these are the permissions which I have already referred here, and that permissions will be providing to that particular group. Okay, so this is a type of a per granted permission role you can see. Okay, so this mm -hmm. we will be seeing later on how to create that role. Then this is the definition part you can see. You now like here we have uh, suppose any specific user you would like to uh, suppose a new user has joined the organization. Then simply you go here and you can uh, add that particular user. Okay, simply like this. So you search that particular user. Let's say SF001. I would like to add. Mm -hmm. This is my new user. Simply I will yes. tick that user and yep. uh, click done. Okay, it is as simple as that. Oh, then click okay. done. Okay. So in this way you can. Uh, so what we have done? So we have added. SF001 to this particular uh, permission group. Okay, so as soon as okay. I added that particular uh, user to this particular group, whatever the permissions have been granted to this uh, super administrator group, that user will be automatically getting all those permissions. So you do not have to individually give the permissions for uh, like, uh, okay. So you got my point? Now it can see it has been uh, 23 to 24, it got increased. Okay. So, um... So in an implementation, uh -huh. the sequence, well, it may not necessarily be a sequence, but mm -hmm. in order for you to be able to assign mm -hmm. memberships to mm -hmm. a, a role mm -hmm. uh, or roles to a group, mm -hmm. it means you have to start the configuration from membership. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So generally what happens, we, whenever you are having access to the, as soon as you are getting access okay. You have already created a super administrator. Okay. So you after doing that, you simply create a uh, by create new. I will just uh, tell you that example. Create okay. new. Okay. So yeah. if you're doing yeah. from scratch, this is an example. So you okay. give a name like this uh, EC admin, let's say for Canada. Okay. Okay. Then here you can uh, now at this moment, at this moment of time, you can see the zero because we have not yes. added any members, right? Yes. Okay. So now user type, it will be here uh, employee only mostly. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. And also there's another option, external onboarding user, which is not relevant as of now because we are yes. not going for onboarding module. Okay. So this is for yes. our external onboarding uh, whenever you are hiring an employee from out. Okay, so that is required, but mostly it will be employee. Then in the people pool, in the people pool, what will be putting here? So basically, like it can be, suppose you like to have uh, on basic some there are many criteria are here. Okay, so like uh, generally there are so many things are here, but uh, you can put it like uh, some user ID, you can put it, that's very simple. Okay, or there is any particular conditions also. Okay, suppose you like to have a 
employee who belong to a particular region all the people will be belonging to this particular uh, group okay so there are there are actually different different options which you have okay so like uh, here you can see country specific you can make department specific you can make division specific you can make okay so there are many options here okay but a simple one yeah. is the user id if you just click a user id and uh, yeah. okay then uh, simply save it also in that particular group suppose there is some exceptions then you can in the next section you can exclude yeah. suppose out of uh, 20 people even if you have cho chosen that particular people pool there is there are some uh, exception one or two people you can exclude them okay so this is a section where exactly you can exclude those uh, people from that yeah. particular group yeah. which you have chosen okay so then it is very simple like you have after do this click the done then in the permission role you will be going and you assigning those permission to the group okay so you can try this one okay of your uh, hmm, so it is an exercise for you yeah now it is clear conceptually it is clear how, why you are doing it yes so what i mean is that if for instance um um let's say user type is not available you can you create that okay no user type it is fixed actually so this is a employee okay this is fixed but for a pick a category okay so you can add any another category also you can see oh, there are okay. different different criteria also suppose you have a multiple combinations of criteria okay uh -huh. then you can put those different different criteria here and uh -huh. okay so like suppose let's say i will be putting one example here let me give some good example So for for a functional consultant, what what would be a typical work, hmm. typical support ro, uh, job that we'll be doing on RBP? RBP is a uh, full time job, as I was mentioning. Basically, okay. because if it is larger organization which is having say twenty thousand, thirty thousand people, you will be having yes. at least two to three people who will be controlling this on a okay. ongoing wow. basis. Okay, you will be this oh, is a full time wow. role. <laughs> this oh, is because okay. it's a lot of thing uh, changes. Okay, yeah. permissions are uh, important. Who will be having that part? Mm. High maintenance. Yeah, high maintenance effort is required for this. Yes, generally, yes. yeah. So you can try this. Okay, so you can have a multiple uh, from a category criteria here in the people pool, and accordingly okay. you can choose that ID here and you save sure. it. Okay, then it will be done. Okay, so then you will be able okay. to access that particular uh, thing. Okay, so once okay. it is done, okay, yeah. suppose in the on ongoing basis, suppose if you like to edit something, then there is a take action button in the right hand side. Okay, so you can directly edit. Okay, or any if you like to or change, check summary of that. Okay, or any any kind of a change history. How many times who has changed that? Okay, so those things also you can uh, you can see now. I have used your ID, the ID which I have given to you. Okay, so this is the way you can audit also. You got my point? Yes. Okay, so this is the, from an audit point of view. This is the where exactly you can go and audit what are the changes we have done. Hmm. So other than that, uh, I will just tell you, this is uh, how you can create a group. Then after creating a group, the next exercises will be your uh, creating those roles, okay. managing permission role. So this is uh, an important activity for every module, not only for Employee Central or any other. So generally, uh, you here will be creating a role like. Uh, hr admin rcm admin okay, or any specific admin for a thing and uh, if you see one of those uh, example let's say hr admin for employees okay so i'm going to this particular role and permissions are generally assigned directly to this role whatever the permissions sap has given so you can see like uh, name and description you can put it as an uh, as per your choice and in the permission settings if you this is a very important one you have a specific two types of permission here okay one is a user permission one is admin permission did you see this two categories yes yes okay so when i say admin permission so these are basically for the admin user okay so you can see admin users it can be managers also okay so it is not for every employees Let's say I'll be giving one example here. 
and some specific example I will be giving you so that uh, it is relevant. Manage user. Okay, so manage users again, like how to change the email notification, many document transfer. Okay, so again, whatever the permission is required, okay, that tick box again you have to tick depending upon your again, it is very much flexible depending upon your requirement. And this requirement you'll be capturing in your uh, during your workshop whenever you're conducting the implementation workshop in that workbook, you will be capturing all those requirements. Okay. okay, let's say. I am talking about uh, competency and skills. Another module. In that, I do not have access because I am an HR admin. I do so. It is only given to the general. Let's say only the performance admin or uh, performance management or go, goal management administrator. So for that reason, I do not have access to it. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, let's say there are some uh, onboarding, offboarding. HR admin is suppose it's not a responsibility, my responsibility. So I will not be given access to it. And there are certain Technical configuration also, like uh, instance synchronization, data management. Okay, depending upon your all requirement, okay, you have will be having access to it. Okay, similar the integration tools. Okay, depending upon your requirement again, what other thing, things you'll be doing, and all these things will be finding in your implementation guide. What permissions okay. should be given? Okay, as a nature admin, some examples are given, some best practices are given. You have to just go through that, and uh, there is no hard and fast rule uh, which should be the given and not to be given. But from an ideal uh, best practice point of view, SAP has some recommendation. Okay. So here, like recruiting, HR admin is suppose, suppose say it is a large organization. You have a different team for recruiting. Okay. So for that reason, this HR admin is not given any of the recruiting access. Okay, you are getting my point. You are following, right? Hello. 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 Yeah. Got my point, right? Whichever the access, depending upon your requirement, and these are the admin permission point of view. Similarly, from user point of view, what are the permissions uh, are to be given? So here, that you can find here. Okay. So from user point of view, like uh, some employee views. Okay. Inside the employee, what are the things you can see? Like uh, life event, payroll, pending request, time of what are the permission is required? That configurations you'll be doing here. Means this is just a checkbox. Okay. So similarly, other factor also there. Like from a payroll point of view, suppose you are a payroll uh, user, then again yes. specific permissions to be given. So this is all about permission. Again, one thing is there, SAP system configuration. This is only for the payroll. People will be having access to the backend system, okay, SAP system configuration. And all is a predetermined. So you have to refer those implementation guide, admin guide, what are the permission to be given in typical environment. Okay. Then you discuss uh, generally with the customers uh, what all is required. Mm. Then you fill up this workbook and complete this permission. Okay. Then after okay. doing this, simply save changes. Okay. Then you will be given access to it. Other than that, another section is there towards the end. So here you can see there are certain permissions. Grant this role. The section three is to whom you will be granting this role. Okay. So if you see here, so this role, so the target population you can see, uh, this is actually granted, which I have discussed, and it's a target population. So the target population can be, it can be everyone, okay, yeah. or it can be specific department also, you can put it. Specific department okay. or specific uh, location, specific division. Okay, so in this way you can specific what are the permission you are having, who are your target population. Suppose you are an HR admin and uh, you are uh, only for a uh, Canada, only you are looking after. Then simply choose and simply choose the location, specific location. Okay, let's say these are my different different uh, group. Okay, what are the groups I have created accordingly? Then I will be choosing that for me, your particular uh, locations or whatever. Okay. So in this way you can target, but ideally it's uh, mostly generality is it is everyone. Otherwise, if you have to specific, you can also specific that. Hmm. And also you have the other choices also. Okay. So suppose you have to target some population for a different different objects also. You can make it different. Okay. Like a division, you like to restrict to a specific division. Okay. Then you can do that also. 
okay so there are many options we do have like a specific you can be business unit you like to target or specific uh, department you like to target hmm. so all those things you can grant accordingly uh, depending upon your requirement okay so these okay. are the different permissions we do have and similarly there is also time based also okay suppose let's say uh, you will be having access to this particular information say for uh, next uh, 10 days 30 days one month two month those kind of date based or time based uh, permissions also you can give it okay so in that way you would not have to remember that after say 30 days you will be you will be not having access to the particular permissions simply put it 30 days or something like that then automatically or one month hmm, so automatically that permission will be uh, uh, erased after one month okay that will be moved out hmm. so all these things yeah. you can do from this kind of a permission setting okay okay so you can go through this is a very huge topic but i try to explain in a very simple and uh, short manner hmm. can i just get one scenario to just practice yeah yeah you can try so what you can okay. do so if you go to this uh, i'm going to the exercises okay yeah so this is the exercise is basically managed uh, role based permission access which you can practice you have to logging in you can create your own uh, say hr coordinator and you can try that okay other than that there is a specific uh, exercise also i can see updating a permission role that means which is already a role has been created and you are going to change certain things okay that you can try it okay other than unit, that uh, unit there two. is uh, also another exercise was there let me check creating a permission group creating a permission role definitely you should try okay by going to that create button right you understood right how to create a permission role and group yes okay so oh, simply, i need to okay. practice Uh, you, need need to to practice. Practice. you need to practice it not very difficult these are very uh, easy things in the platform functionality okay simply okay. i yes. also made it favorite in your screen okay what you can do after this uh, session you can try yeah. to go to the of my favorite manage permission yeah. group and create one group of your own and after that you yeah. create a role also permission role then yeah. you assign that role to that particular group okay you take a complete day and you can try that and if you have any issues you can always uh, reach out in the otherwise in the next session we'll discuss but it is one of the most important activity from a platform point of view and it is yeah. applicable for all modules of success factor it is not only yes. for employee central if you are understanding this then these things you can apply in any modules of success factor okay okay so this is generic concept uh, lesson 1 i have explained managing security using success factor rpp okay and uh, proxy did you try it or uh, proxy manager this is not very frequently used in a typical implementation but uh, you should know it okay okay so like suppose you would like to assign some proxy okay so if simply you have to go to the start typing so whatever you can anything you can as you do not have any transaction code in sap success factor simply you type the word and you will be getting the that particular thing okay so as i soon as soon as i type proxy you can see the proxy management is coming up okay if i go to okay. proxy here you can grant suppose somebody you would like who will be act as the proxy and what yes. account holder will be proxy act on behalf okay so simply you use that particular user and what are the rights you are going to give okay so whether you are to give a proxy for uh, all modules or any specific module you would like to give the access okay and from what time to what time what day to what date you would like to give that okay so those kind of things you can do all in here in the proxy management uh, sub module or setting okay in the setting you can do the same thing has been explained here uh, in this section okay as how to assign a proxy delete a proxy uh, so it is a very easy thing nothing so difficult hmm. okay so is it clear up to this you need to yeah. okay so we'll stop here then in the just practice it because i didn't go proceed too much because rbp is very important one so you have to just yeah. uh, read the concept once again and yeah. uh, you try to do two to one or two group or role and you assign those roles and permission you try to do the hands on 
then in the next okay. session we'll be starting with uh, this uh, this is an easy one like customizing yeah. a instance so how to beautify your instances okay how to apply a theme how to apply those home pages how to yes. So all these things, uh, you may also, if you're having time, you can also go through it just a little bit. It's very easy to understand. Just simply okay. how to upload a logo, how to create yeah. those custom tile. Mm, so it's not okay. very uh, easy. I mean, it's not very difficult. It's very easy to follow. Mm, simply go yeah. through the steps. You can go through. Okay. Then uh, we okay. may go through the, similar the mobile settings, as I was also mentioning, how to activate the mobile yeah. from the success factor after downloading success factor app. Okay. Okay. So you can also experiment this. Uh, you you can download the Success Factor app, then uh, enable whatever the demo instance I've given to you. Okay, that you can yes. try. Okay. okay. So those are the things. Couple of things. Then sure. uh, lesson four is an important one, which I will take a little more time. UDF uh, and all these things. They call it a user data file. This is a little tricky, but I will explain. And uh, email notification is again it's an easy one. Okay. So there are a couple of things in the same section. Maybe we will continue okay. in the next session. Okay. Okay. So try to go through it. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah. Any questions okay. before we? Uh, uh, no, I, I look forward to doing because I really want to practice this RBP. Yeah. Yeah, I want to practice it because uh, it looks like it's a very uh, even for the certification, it's a very mm. important part. Yes, RBP is an important uh, topic in the from a certification point of view also. Okay. Yes. Other topics are easy, but RVP is a little uh, need practice. Okay. Okay. Not difficult, yes. but I will say to understand the those target users, granted users, uh, those concept, uh, permission yes. role settings. Okay, because yes. it's a module, not very much module specific, as I was mentioning. It is uh, across yes. the modules. It will be helpful once you understand okay. it. For any other modules, whenever you are learning, then it is very easy to follow. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. with that, with that note, yeah, thank, welcome. With that note, I will stop here, and you can uh, send that uh, job descriptions to me. I will. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to forward it to. Huh. I'm going to forward it to you now. Yes, you just forward me, and I will go through it, and I will okay. guide you. Maybe day after tomorrow, we will meet again. Yeah. yeah okay. It. Okay. Thank, thank you very thank much, you. you for your time. Yeah. Have a, Have good, a good night. Okay. Uh, good night. Good day. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye.